Hey guys, what's up? I don't know if I'll release this or not. I need to fix my wig and get done up. I have an appointment, a doctor's appointment. Uh, this is the second part to basically being, you know, single and pregnant, which will turn into like a single mom's vlog eventually. Um, I do this because it's therapeutic and, you know, it helps me get some shit off my chest. And I hope someone can learn from what I'm going through. So if you're going through something similar or the exact same, uh, you're not alone and you can cope through this the best you can and hey you're not alone dealing with similar issues this is the world a lot of people have similar issues so right now we're a month away from giving birth um everything's been good the pregnancy has been good you guys uh compared to the last video i made where i was like literally in tears sitting in the dark after work feeling super distraught and broken right i'm sure you guys remember that video if not it will be in the description box. I have came a long ways. I feel a lot better than I did before. Coping with all this. Um, the hardest part for me right now is the fact that my child's dad, his whole family, does not acknowledge my child. Boom. I never wanted to be with him in the first place. Like, I kind of felt bad when we first broke up. So if you're watching this, you'll know the truth, my dear. I didn't really want to be back with him. I mostly felt bad because I liked him as a person. And I didn't want to lose him as a person in my life. But then I knew he wasn't good for me. So at the same time of like not wanting to be a dick and completely cut him off. Because I felt like he was using me on many levels sexually. Uh, a little bit money wise. Like it was like, oh. Um, I want to make dinner for you, but will you go buy the groceries? And I just started realizing, like, maybe I've been too kind to this dude that he's starting to think I'm just this money machine. Which, you know, maybe I read you wrong or whatever. But I just knew he wasn't for me. And then, like, you know, he joked about um, almost getting herpes, which was, like, super red flag for me. And my brother kind of set me down and was like, what are you thinking? Like, he doesn't take proper, you know, sexual health care. And, like why are you this lonely and like you really need to look in yourself like why are you with this dude like he's not your type like he's not you guys don't have the same morals you guys don't have you guys could probably make good friends but like sexual partners this is not working and on top of it like he was polyamorous he had other women which I was fine with at first but I started noticing he was putting me below like it was like he's in love with this other woman and I was just like a side piece and I was just like no, 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 no. I'm not going to be second best to this to this girl. Like, I'm good. You know, and I, I was really confused. And come to find out I was pregnant. And it makes a lot of sense why I was emotionally, like, confused <laughs> a lot with my emotions. And it made sense because it was like, Yo, you, you're prego. That's why you're tripping. You're... Anyways, that's just some backstory. And then, so now we're here. And... Um, every time we have spoken, it's been really negative and nasty, so I, I don't plan on reaching out ever again. I'm done. Um, that's been good for me. I don't want to keep reaching out to someone when every time, oops, sorry guys. Um, every time I reach out, it's really a negative conversation. It's a negative, it's always like a fight or an argument. So me personally, I chose not to reach out anymore. Teach its own. If you're watching this video and you're in a similar situation where you're basically alone and pregnant, but you're trying to get the cooperation of your your child's father to like, you know, be there for your child. Because I think a lot of people get it confused. Well, at least for me, I don't want to be with you. I don't want to be with him. Do I want my kid to have a dad or an influence of a father? Of course. But if he's not going to be one, a good influence. Two, be consistent. Three, even acknowledge that my child exists. Like, on his social media, his family social media, they don't talk about my child. They, I don't think my child exists in their world. So why should I press them to accept something they don't want to? I think that's unhealthy, ladies. And I would recommend don't do that. Don't do that. Just let, let it go. And I know that sounds so shitty where you're like, I'm so angry though. This is, this is where I'm at right now. Is I'm angry. Because I'm so upset that these people post, like, 
in particularly, they post about all this liberal nonsense, this woke bullshit, but they're not even gonna acknowledge the fact that they're having a person coming into this world soon. They don't give a fuck, but they can post about, you know, um, Bernie Sanders and what's going on with the LGBTQ community and uh, the the water crisis in Flint, Michigan. And they could post about anything under the sun, politics, this, this, that, this, and the third, uh, punch a Nazi, da, 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 just nonsense, right? Like shit that matters, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter when you have your own own problems right here. And it upsets me because it's just like, so you can post about everything under the sun, people that are being discriminated against, da, 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 but you can't post about, you know, your own seed. And even like, my kid's a dirty little secret. I don't think people know he's having a child. I think it's very private and I know a few people know. I'm confident a lot of people don't know. And that same goes for his mother and his father. Um, I appreciate his sister. She came to my baby shower, but at the same time, she didn't bring anything. She came empty handed to the baby shower. She didn't bring anything. So it makes me like, feel like, well, why'd you come? And she left early. So it's just like, well, why'd you come? Like, and I feel like she came, I feel, I hope it was not malicious, but at the same time, I don't know. I don't know how to feel when it comes to them because no one has reached out to me as a respectable person face to face and said, hey, this is, this is what we want. Or, hey, like even the person, my child's father hasn't came out to me and say, hey, let's have a sit down. Let's talk. Even from the beginning. Like there was no respect there. There was no respect. It was just like, oh, have the abortion. I'll show up to the abortion. Other than that, there was no like solidarity, respect, nothing. Like he ignored me for a whole 24 hours once I told him I was pregnant, which I was just like, Yo, I'm shook. I'm scared. Like, I don't know what to do. Should I keep the baby? Should I not keep the baby? We're not talking. We're not together. Like, what do I do? So, yeah. Like, that. that's where I'm at right now. I, I'm just upset because there's no acknowledgement of my child. And I think it offends me to the core. And it, and it upsets me. But I, something that I'm going to learn how to let go in 2020. Um, that's kind of where I'm at right now, you guys. It's just learning how to accept all this. Because now we're here. The kid's been born. He hasn't been supportive for the full term of the pregnancy. And not a dollar, not a hand of support, not a, hey, I know we don't get along. I don't fucking like you, but I'm here for my child. Nothing. Not one doctor's appointment. Nothing. So for me personally, it's just like, I tried. I fought with him. I argued with him. I tried to, you know, I, I tried. You know, and I even tried to come at him with many of times with respect and not trying to be argumentative. And sometimes he would turn it into like a full blown argument. And I'd be like, that that's not where I was trying to go with you. Little do you know, but that's why we need to talk in person, but never happened. He involved other people into the shit. Um, it, it's just been a lot last year, but I'm cutting it off this year. And I really, <clears throat> excuse me, guys want to raise my son in a happy place. I don't want to be in a dark place raising a child. I don't want to be in negativity raising a child. I don't want to bring a child into negativity. I don't want that. And I'm not going to force people to love and respect my child and respect me because at the end of the day, I am the mother. So you will respect me, period, poo. Because I ain't going nowhere. This is my child. I carry this child without any support from y'all. Not a goddamn thing. And I don't expect y'all to do a goddamn thing. So it is what it is. So don't, don't, please don't come around disrespecting me and acting. Mm. And it, it's just to the point where I'm just like, you know, I really regret even meeting this person. Be careful who you lay down with. Um, be careful who you lay down with because like you guys use protection 24 seven. Don't, don't even think it's for fun because when things get serious and you get pregnant or things aren't quote unquote fun anymore, life is real and you can create a, you can create a baby and that's reality and you will and can be by yourself the whole pregnancy. And I would recommend you not to want to be like this. And if you are like this, keep your motherfucking head held high. Stay focused on what's important. Go to work every day. Save your money. 
if you have supportive family, lean on them 100% because that's what I've been doing to my mother and my father, my brother and my sister. They're the only people that have been there for me. You lean on them for the support that you need. Because we all need support. And if you don't have support, there is uh, people out here, resources you can talk to. You don't have to choose. I'm not like, I'm pro-choice. So if you choose, you know, to abort your kid, that, that's okay. Like if you choose to have abortion, that's okay. Do what's best for you personally because i you know i had an appointment and everything set up but it wasn't something i was ready to do i wanted to have a child i always wanted a kid and i had some complications with uh, my body so i was like you know maybe this is you know time this is the universe telling me like hey you may not ever have a kid and i kind of i kind of felt that for me like this might be my only chance to have a child so let me just take advantage of this and raise my kid despite everything. Because I knew if I chose to keep the kid, he was not going to be involved. I never knew he was shit on me the way he did, but he did. And uh, the thing that kept me focused the most was work, my family, and knowing that I was creating a beautiful child at the end of the day. That this kid would come into the world because of my choices and innocently. I don't want to cry. And not, you know, this kid came into this world innocently. And this kid deserves everything. A good life, a good parent, a good everything. And I was just like, I got to get my shit together so I can provide. That. And so that's what I'm doing, you guys, as an update of being alone and pregnant is really getting my mind together, getting prepared to have a child. A lot of things are changing. Um... And just getting ready to raise my kid. And even that's like working on myself and my own mental and my own shit. So I could be a better parent because, you know, if I'm going to be a single parent, I got to make sure I'm on my shit. A hundred percent. Because I'm all this kid has. You know, my family is all this kid has. So, you know, I, I'm working hard. I'm working hard. I'm working damn near full time still. I just barely want part time. I have to work to the end of my pregnancy. And yes, it's hard, ladies. I'm not going to front. You're going to have those days where you don't want to get up. You don't want to go to work. But just put in your mind like I'm doing this for my child. And that's what motivates me. And I look at my bank account and I'm like, well, I need more money. Because I am alone. And nobody's going to help me but me and my family. And I can't put, I put enough stress on my parents by helping me because I'm the woman, I carry the baby. You know, if it was up to him, I would have just had an abortion, you know? And I, I do want to talk about that a little bit more just because the disregard for me was like so low. So ladies, just be careful who you fucking lay down with. At the end of the day, that's been my biggest thing. It was like, I don't know him. I don't know my baby's father. I've known him for like, maybe like two months. Like we were getting to know each other for two months, but we don't even know each other. I don't even know him. That's why like the biggest thing was like, even if we're not together, like let's get to know each other because we don't know each other. We we just don't. And that's just like being real as fuck and saying like, when you lay down with niggas you don't know, like, and you're just like dating and fucking around. Like, you don't know these niggas. Like, I don't know his family. I don't know why he has so much anger inside of himself. Why he, you know, would talk about his own mama to me and, just like everything I, I look back on everything he ever said I was like whoa you like talk about your own mom like I should have known like he had no respect for women then I you know I meet his wife and you know the story he told me is fake and it's just like there's been so much you guys throughout this all I could say is like self-focus and leave that shit behind and if you're pregnant right now and you're alone you can do it you can message me for support um there's different support groups for women online. There's tons of articles to read. No, I take that back. There's not a lot to read because <laughs> I, I struggled. But we'll also do a part two to this video because there's just so much to say. But right now, I'm just trying to get my mind right to, you know, have my baby and be a good mother. That's where I'm at right now. I'm working hard. I'm saving money. I'm buying the last little things my son's going to need for his first six months of life. And that's what I'm doing. And I'm preparing and I'm nervous, but I'm doing the damn thing. And that's all I can do is fight for my child. Like I've been fighting and um, believing in myself and working on myself at the same time. That's what I'm doing right now. I love you guys. Stay up. Don't 
let a man pressure you to do anything you don't want to do. You have rights. This is your body. Ultimately, you do everything your fucking self anyways. And I'm going to say that. I love you guys. I'll come back with a part two with some more like written down stuff because this is just me talking from the heart and just talking from the way I feel. Like, it, this shit hasn't been easy. Especially, you know, dealing with their bullshit and the fact like my kid's not being acknowledged. That's where it's at right now. I need to heal from the anger. I'm angry. I think that's the most I am is angry because like, he walks around and tells people like, oh, I'm gonna be supportive to my kid. Well, be supportive, nigga. Like, be supportive. Ask me, do you need any help? Be supportive. Talk to me with respect and I'll give you respect. But if until then, yo, you, you have no respect for me. A text message ain't shit. Talk to me like, talk to me like you met me, nigga. Talk to me like the day you pick, like, talk to me. Don't treat me like I'm some fucking outsider. And then, I, you know, and then you like tripping on me. Like, nigga, I'm pregnant. I had tons of emotions, motherfucker. Like, don't, I'm out, you guys, because I'm upset.